$2,955? Yeah. And how many million are we going to do that by? Five. Five million. All right. Hey, folks, welcome, welcome, and welcome to Math Line this afternoon. It's not your call-in day. It's a great specialized segment today, and I'm your host, Ernie Roberts. And we're so glad you tuned in this afternoon. And hopefully you're ready to get some paper, pencil, sit back, relax, and let's do some math. What else can we do? It's a great way to spend an afternoon, right? Or even your spare time. Those of you who are checking this out on YouTube or on our websites. You know, we are so glad to be here. And I know some of you are wondering, when, when, when do we actually get through this series? Well, let's take a look and see what we're going to do today. The series that I'm talking about is Special Right Triangles. And the light at the end of the tunnel is here, all right? But the truth of the matter is, it's just a great topic. There's some good things there. It's good for practice. And we want to go one more time with it today. We're going to mix it up. We're going to mix it up. You may even see them appearing in the same problem, all right? 45, 45, 90s, and 30, 60, 90s in the same problem, you say, Ernie? Just wait and see. Just wait and see. So speaking of those kind of problems, you got your pencils? You got your paper ready? Everybody good? Let's do some math. Let's see what we've got. It says, find the measures of each indicated length. And notice, I put little variables there just in case you were wondering <laughs> which of those we're going to be finding. Remember what I said, we might mix it up. We might put a 45, 45, 90 and a 30, 60, 90 in the same figure. And some of you are going like, what are you talking about 30, 60, 40? What does that mean? That means the types of triangles we've got here based on angle measure. Notice I've got a 90 here, I've got a 30, and I'm going to put a 60 right up there. That's what we call it, a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So that's the first thing I want to make sure everybody does. How did I know it was a 90? I had that little right angle down there. Life is good. On the left-hand side of this figure, as you're drawing, hopefully, at home, we've got a hypotenuse, we've got a Y that we're looking for, which is a leg, and we also want to know, well, what's the other angle up here? The other angle, because they add up to 180 inside that triangle, we've used up, looks like, 45 and 90, which is 135. We have 45 left over. And by the way, what's magical about that? You see what's magical about it? It becomes isosceles. So whatever we have for this lovely altitude piece that's going right down the center of our figure here, it's going to match up right over here for our letter Y because guess what? Isosceles triangles, that's why we put little tick marks there. So we'll remember, those are the same. We don't have to work very hard to figure those out. So speaking of which, let's go to it. Let's work through this problem. And I'm going to kind of just draw kind of down the middle here because we're going to use the right side as the 30, 60, 90 rules. The left side, we're going to play off the 45, 45, 90 rules. Formulas, formulas, formulas. It always seems like there's some of those, right? Just always kind of mess with us, what have you. First of all, I'm going to go back to hypotenuse. And I don't want you to get confused because we've got a W and a Z here because we just put letters and variables up there. But really what's going on here, this is kind of like a little ABC moment with the 30, 60, 90. And we know the hypotenuse, which is W, on the right side, in this case, W is going to be equal to two times our little guy opposite the 30. Sometimes you know that A equals um, half of C, or C equals 2A. So let me just start off with those two formulas, and we're going to replace with what we have. Got it? Everybody good on that? Everybody's good on that. So what we're going to do here is take that once again. We're going to plug in what we know. Well, we don't know C yet, but we call it W. That's going to be our W form, all right? So everybody knows we're looking for W over there. And that's going to equal to two times. What's the A part of the 30, 60, 90? It's this little guy right there. The 3 times the square root of 3. So we're going to put it right in there. And you know what? I didn't put any values on these per se as inches or what have you. We just call them units. We just call them units. That would be work for good. And by the way, that one's easy. All you got to do is double. 3 square roots of 3. And notice the 2 goes through the 3. It does not go through the square root of 3. Don't do that. You're going to get 6 square roots of 3. So there's our W right there. Now, for those of you who are a little bit squeamish, <laughs> and sometimes people are with math, we could still go with another formula here, or you could go a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I personally would like to just go with another form, the other formula, all right? That second formula tells us, I'm going to put a little more down over here. I think I've got room. Yes, I do. That our b value, which in this case is z, is going to equal the value of a times the square root of 3. Now, again, Remember, we're going back to our 30, 60, 90. 
And in this case, we're talking the letter Z right there. That's our little guy that we're working with now from the purple over, all right, or the lighter blue as some of your mind. It, you know, colors are always interesting when I look out there and see what it is. On my piece of paper, it looks kind of purplish, but on yours, it may be a lighter version of blue. Who knows? And we're going to put our A value, which is that three roots of three, three square roots of three, and we're going to multiply it by one more square root of three. And life is going to be good, honest. I promise, I promise, I promise. You say, well, how good are we going to promise this? I hope we're going to promise this really well. It looks like our little Z value down there is equal to, are you ready? Everybody ready? Drum roll. Three times, oh, another three. Because when we take the square root of three times the square root of three, it just gives us three. So that's equal to three times three, which in this case is going to give us a nice pretty nine. You say, well, Ernie, that didn't have a square root. It did not because the square root of three times the square root of three basically says we are rationalized. We are at three and alone. So three times three, that's where you get the nine. So there we have it. We've got the 30, 60, 90 side rocking and rolling. Now let's play the other side. I gave you a hint. I gave you a hint that this Y being isosceles, they're both going to be the same amount. So let's go ahead and put it in there. Three times the square root of three. That was really easy. All right. So we've got Y equaling, what did I say? Three times the square root of three. It was easy because we already knew that, right? We knew that because isosceles, right triangles. They work great. Now what am I going to do to get to X? And you're looking at, oh my goodness, where are we going to go? There's a formula. <laughs> there we go again. In this case, our little x guy is going to equal to, I'm going to call it y, times, this time, the square root of 2. So in other words, this leg times the square root of 2 will get you over to the hypotenuse. That's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Because in this case, what's y? It's ooh, interesting, very interesting. I'm about to say it's really easy, and it is, it is. Trust me, you got to trust me, right? We've got 3 times the square root of 3, that's our y, and we're going to take that and multiply it times the square root of 2, which doesn't sound very pretty, but it's really not bad. It's really not bad because we're going to bring the 3 right down there, and now we're going to multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, and folks, 3 times 3 doesn't give you 9, okay? No, it's not 3 times 3 to begin with, right? It's 3 times 2, so it gives you 6, and you know what? The square root of 6, irrational, we're going to leave it as such. Now, for those of you who like to make decimals, and I know there are a lot of you out there, you could tap that in your calculator, say three times the square root of six, and it will give you a nice decimal value. We are going to be fine with the radicals in today's session because usually we think of roots of three, roots of two, and ooh, here we jumped the gun. That's why it's the light at the end of the tunnel. We went to the root of six, and it's okay. It's okay just simply because we did multiply still by that square root of two. So understand the magic root really is for 45, 45, 90, square root of 2. The magic root over here for the 30, 60, 90 is the square root of 3. That's why I want to mix some problems together. So we really have to think and categorize which set of triangles does which radicals. Okay? So we got it started. We're good. All right? We are looking forward to, hopefully you haven't lost your pencil and paper yet because there's more to come. More to come. Yes, yes. So let's take a look at our next little problem here. It says, find the altitude and perimeter of this isosceles trapezoid. Now, you know what isosceles trapezoid means? That means the legs are going to be congruent. It also means the lower base angles will be the same. And I think I went ahead and gave you that hint that it would be. But we're going to put a 60 there, and we're going to put a 60 degrees right over there. You say, wow, Ernie. I say, wow, Ernie, also. That looks pretty good. Now, what do we got to do? We're going to find the altitude. Where in the heck is the altitude? It is coming right at you here. Let's see what it's coming at with us here. We've got it coming right there. And an altitude, my friends, makes perpendicular, makes a right angle. So that's what we're looking at. And some of you are already jumping and say, I got it. 30, 60, 90. You got it. I got it. We all got it. There we go. So the 30 is up here at the top, up at the top. Now, information-wise, what have I done to you? Oh, let's draw another altitude and see if it'll help us. You know, when <laughs> worst comes to worst, draw something, right? And let's see, let's see what we're doing here. I have 10 meters still across the top, but now, oh, I've split off some things here. You know what I've done? I pulled a 10 right down here because all of these are right angles. 
So I've got a sweet rectangle of sorts. Could be a square, but I think at least it's a rectangle. That's for sure. I don't think it's going to be a square, folks. I really don't. I think we're going to keep a rectangle inside the middle here. We're going to go with that. But what does that mean? I had 20. The 20 goes all the way to both left and right. That means I've cut off 10 of the 10. And you know what that means? I keep saying, what does that mean? It means we have a 5 and a 5 here. Oh, a 5 and a 5. And, oh, by the way, just for those of you who are wondering, we have a 30, 60, 90 over there also, which is pretty cool. Because what is it going to tell us? We're going to be able to figure out that altitude pretty soon here because it's the side opposite the 60. And we're going to be able to figure out the hypotenuse, which will lead us to, you got it, to the perimeter. Whew. That's a long feeling problem, isn't it? So let's do one thing at a time. We haven't found the altitude. We're looking for that. We're also looking for the perimeter. So rest a second. Take a look at where you think we're going to go. I have a five. That's the magic gatekeeper here. Formulas. No 45, 45, 90 is running through here. This is all about the 30, 60, 90. So here we go. Remember we said earlier, and we'll say it again, that A, which is opposite the 30, and C is going to be twice that amount. The other side of the tunnel, the B, which is opposite the 60. By the way, that might be your B right there waiting for you. That altitude or this altitude, they're both the same. They're both the same because parallel lines. Did I tell you they were parallel? I'll tell you they're parallel because that means these are the same size once we get there. 30, by the way, folks, that's the degrees up there, okay? That's our degrees. I know it kind of a little bit jammed up in there, but 30 is not any length. That's a degree measure. We're still looking for some measurements here. By the way, what's the A formula for B? Well, you're going to put that A times the square root of 3 in there. There's the two formulas. C, double the A. B, tap a square root of 3 in the picture. All right, let's see how it works. I've got C equals 2 times. So I got it. A is 5. A is 5. Hold your hands up. You got 5. B, well, if A is 5, there's going to still be 5. So here we go. Put it in back in there. And now we have 5 times the square root of 3. You know what? Right there, some of you are wondering, well, is that going to tell me anything? There's the altitude. Put it right in there. You say, well, what's that C business? Well, C is 10. It's the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse of the 30, 60, 90, which happened to be both of these sides. So that's a 10. Remember, isosceles. It's a 10 over here. Hey, 10, 10. And add them together. There are three of them now. I should do three tens, but we'll move on. I've got 10 and 10 and 10, which gives us 30. Add the 20. It looks like my perimeter is going to be 50, whatever we got here. If we got inches, meters, what have you, that's going to be the perimeter. And you know what? That came out a lot quicker than some of you thought it would, didn't it? <laughs> All of a sudden, because you use your picture. Your picture tells you so much. And use these two little lovely formulas. You'll be in business. 30, 60, 90. Applied to a trapezoid because you still have 30, 60, 90 is within that figure. That's the way we think. A good problem solving moment there. Okay, now let's see where we're going from here. Ah, I think we've got a similar figure. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we've got here. It's got the isosceles triangles, J P O M. Well, let's put J P O M since they say they're supposed to be there. We'll put them there. By the way, notice how I just flittered those around. You said, well, could those. Vertices C's could have been anywhere. Those letters could have gone anywhere. As long as they're in order, J-P-O-M. I could have said J-P-O-M. I just need to make sure this kind of translates down to clockwise or counterclockwise, somewhere on the figure. Now, where are we going to go with this? It's isosceles. I gave you a couple of hints, just like last time. I gave you a 10 and a 20. So, well, that's the same figure, except... I gave you a 45 degree instead of a 60. You say, oh, why did you do that, Ernie? Because we're going to make you think a little bit. Shift gears, we might say. Let's pull an altitude down here, although it didn't ask for that, but we're going to, that's going to help us. You see why we're going to do that? Because that creates a triangle for us. And it actually creates a nice situation here because we got a right angle there. We got a 45 degree there. Let's see if we can get that to work over here. And the same story here. It looks familiar. We've got this little kind of rectangle business going on again. Let's see where this is going to lead us. This time I'm going to pick up 10 here. 
Dear friends, I'm going to pick up five again out here because remember, this 20 goes all the way to the end. So I'm using up 10. I'm going to split the difference right over here. In case you were wondering where I got those two fives last time, they split because they're identical. These two triangles are congruent, meaning those two lengths are both the same measure. So you had 10 inches, 10 meters, whatever units you want to use. You've got to split it into five and five. That's what you had left over. So now where do we go? Well, we find the altitude. I don't think it asked for the altitude, but it's nice to know that anyway. Because again, isosceles. So these little guys here, we'll put three ticks, two ticks there. By the way, those are the same also. So there we go, five and five. And you may say, well, what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to use a formula. Or we could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this one's not so difficult to do that, but let's put a formula on it. In this case, the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times, again, hypotenuse is equal to the leg times that, oh, that lovely square root of two value. Let's see what that does. Well, that's easy. Five times the square root of two. Are we done? We're done with finding sides because this guy over here is the same. It's isosceles. But what's the question asked? It asked for what is the perimeter. So let's pull that together. If we can drop the bottom out just a little bit down there. Thank you. If you want to make it a decimal, go for it. But let's do it in radical form. And let's be careful. And then we can maybe tap it down the calculator and see what it actually is in terms of a decimal value. Nah, you really don't care, do you? <laughs> let's see what we've got here. We've got 10 and 20. First of all, the two bases. Remember that 20 is the entire base. Let me move that out of there. Move it right down there. That 20 is the whole base. And we got 10, so that's 30. We've got, on the sides, we've got a five roots of two and another five square roots of two, and they're going to add up to give us 10 times the square root of two, and that's the best we can do. I can't put 30 and 10 together and then say, let's multiply by the square root of two. All right, that would be a, that'd be a very distorted answer. It would be improper, it would be incorrect, blah, 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 everything. You have to have the square root of 2 on there also if you're going to add the 30 and the 10. Remember that. Don't get crazy when you see this. Oh, we got 40 roots of 2. No, we don't. We have 30 plus 10 times the square root of 2. And if you were to tap that into your calculator, it would not equal 40 times whatever it is. You would be getting 30, and then the calculator would take 10 times that square root of 2 because it knows order of operations. And that would be simplified radical form. There you go. Not so bad. Not so bad. And sometimes we try to make things a little bit more difficult than they are. Just remember, like radicals, this one doesn't have one. Got to keep them separate. Sort of like adding, oh, 30 plus 10x. You would never put those together. You just leave it 30 plus 10x. Think of that radical like a variable because that's exactly what it's doing. It's a replacement. It's a number that we put in there. And it doesn't match up with the 30. It doesn't have an attachment there. Okay? So I hope that helps you see a little bit, a good example there with the radicals going on. Now, another switch, what can we have come in our way? Let's see what our next problem does. Whew! Find each segment length in the figure, oh, once the altitude to the hypotenuse is drawn. Well, since it said altitude, that tells me a lot. Since the word hypotenuse is there, that tells me a lot. And you know what? I'm going to tell you a little bit more because we really do need to know an angle there. Let's go with 30. Let's go with 30 degrees, and let's put a right angle in there because I did say it was going to be a right triangle, so how about it? We're going to create a 30, 60, 90. You're going like, well, that was easy, and it is, it is. Now, the next question says we've got to put an altitude where to the hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. These guys here and here, these two legs are already altitudes of the triangle. There's a third one, and we're going to pop it right in there. We're going to draw it in there and get as close to a 90 degree as we can. Should look good going right through there. There it is. And makes a right angle. That's what an altitude is all about. Perpendicular. And the hypotenuse, of course, is the longest segment. Then you say, well, Ernie, what did that just do for us? It did some great things. It created a 30, 60, 90 here because look at the little right triangle, that little upper right-hand corner of your picture there. And down here, it's creating a bigger 30, 60, 90. And we started with a huge 30, 60, 90. So there's three 30, 60, 90 degree triangles in this problem. Three special triangles. They all have the same shape. They are just different sizes based on the legs and the hypotenuse. 
They're still going to be in this special relationship. You say, what's that special relationship? One more time. You've been watching the show every week. You know it. You've got it. It's going to be C equals 2A or B equals A times that square root of 3. That's our 30, 60, 90 business. You say, well, what do you know? My goodness, we need to know something, don't we? What do you want to, oh, you can't tell me what to put in here, right? Y'all are watching me. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we're going to put a 9 right there. Right there, we'll put a 9. Somebody says, why don't you put a square root of, no, we're going to put a 9. All right, we're just going with 9. Whew, where are we in this case? We have no choice. We have to start with this little left-sided triangle here. Not the biggie, because it's not a full side of the big one. It's the B side of this 30, 60, 90. See, it's opposite the 60. So, oh, you said, Ernie, that means you've got to start with, yes, we got to do it. You've got to say 9 equals A times that square root of 3. And what are we going to do? We're going to divide both sides by that square root of 3. I tend to use these lovely square root of 3s and 2s because that's the formula, all right? And if they'll let me see that, you all can see where we're going on that too. There we go. Thank you, guys. And we have, a canceling out, nope, we have A staying around. The roots of 3 cancel out, but on the other side, we've got to do a little rationalizing. Remember we did them earlier? You worry, in case you're just showing up, we have to multiply by the square root of 3 to get that denominator to go without a radical. And if we do it to the denominator, the infamous rule, you've got to do it to your numerator. Bottom gets it, the top gets it too. Equal treatment. And what I see here is, well, I'm working left to right, aren't I? It looks like it. Let's go for 9 times that square root of 3. And what's the three, square root of 3 times the square root of 3? It gives us 3. That's one of those easy facts to remember. Equaling to A, cancel them out. Now, you know, you've seen some of these divided by radical folks. There's another way we can do it. We call, I call it the divide and attach. Forget all this other stuff here. Divide 9 by 3, it gives you 3. Bring the square root of 3 up for the ride. If you've got a nice integral value with no root up there in the numerator, that's a nice way to go, dividing and attaching. You say, what happens if it doesn't get them even? Well, make it, make it 9 over 2 times the square root of 2 or something like that. It so happened that this worked out nicely, but if you had a radical here that wasn't going to divide evenly in that, still divide it, make it an improper fraction, and attach your radical into the numerator. It's a nice shortcut way. I like to call it divide and attach, but I digressed a little bit, didn't I? Speaking of that final answer, we have three roots of three. So where's that going, Ernie? That's going right here. Now we can bounce all over the place. What do we do? That's A. That's what our A is. What do we say about C? It's twice as large. That's easy. Two times, two times, I'll just jump in the gun here, two times the square root of three that's going to give us 6 roots of 3. And you say, where's that? That would be right here in the big picture. Or finishing out this little picture. But it's also in the big triangle. It's also the big triangle. So you say, where do we go now? You're sure trying to get me home, aren't you? Well, we've got this 3 roots of 3. Got this 3 roots of 3 hanging out here. It's opposite the 60. So let's go back again. That's B equals, again, that formula, a times the square root of 3. This time we've got a 3 square roots of 3 equaling a times the square root of 3. Well, you know, we're going to divide by that square root of 3. This time life is good. This time you don't have to sweat it. This time, give thanks. Because what happens? Square roots of 3 cancel out this time on both sides, and I've got lovely 3 for a. So where did that A go? You say, where in the world are we? There it is. There's your 3 going right up there opposite that 30. We're looking at the upper picture. And now our hypotenuse, gosh, it's twice 3. Can we do that? C equals 2 times 3. That's going to give us C equals 6. My goodness, we found everything. And in case inquiring minds want to know, and I'm sure you do, you had 9 plus 3, you got the whole hypotenuse of the big triangle also. We'll give you 12. We'll give you 12. There you go. A little bit of a finalizing on these whew, 30, 60, 90s, as well as our 45, 45, 90s. Hope you've enjoyed the show today. You know, you can see a lot of our shows that we do as specialized segments, as well as our problems of the day through YouTube. So let's talk a little bit about that. Love that new graphic logo there. Like and subscribe to MathLine Online. Follow us there. Check us out. 
This show will probably be hopefully in its entirety. If nothing else, we might even break it up into segments, but it's there for people to practice. It's there for you all to get a little bit of kind of tutorial advice and how to work some problems and get ahead of those other friends of yours that are not watching MathLine. And what about our Facebook? Well, we've got that going too. Ooh, love that blue. Like and follow us there. You can even love us and smile with us, all sorts of great things at www.facebook.com and notice that forward slash going with MathLine Online. That's what we've got going on now. We are excited to kind of be moving forward. We're so glad you've tuned in today. We like it when you do that, obviously. We also like it when you do tune in on our live call-in days and you call in. That'll be coming up next week or during the weekdays here pretty much Monday through Thursday. But we need you to make the show rock and hopefully this has rocked you today. Again, where do we use these 30, 60, 90s, 45, 45, 90s? That'll be your pre-calculus days, so you don't want to miss out on those. Learn them now. Makes it easier later. Thanks for tuning in today. See you next time.